Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of the show with no name exclusively on Vaughn Radio. And folks, you are in for a treat. We've got a lot of great stuff we're going to learn today. And I've got a lot of surprises. So everybody hold on to your hats because it's time for liftoff. T minus 10, 9, 9 8, 7, 7 6, 6, oops. 5, 4, Come on, you got 3, it. 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Let's go. Liftoff. Liftoff. 30 minutes after the hour. All right, folks, here we go. Get ready. Hold on to your hats. Strap on your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelts. Hold on to your hats. Get ready for the ride of your it's life. The show with no it's show with no name. On Vaughn Radio. It's the show with no name. That's right, that's right, amigos. Welcome one, welcome all. It's time for the show with no name. I hope you had a great weekend. If you didn't have to work, hey, some people have to work on the weekends. I know personally, most weekends I work. Okay, <laughs> let's be honest. I don't work eight hour days. You know, I don't work full time on the weekends. But I always put in a few hours of work. Hey, you know, A, when you love what you do, it makes it easier. And B, as many of you know, aside from working here on Vaughn Radio, I've always got a lot of projects. And those projects require time and effort, just like anything, just like learning English, for example. Well, welcome aboard, amigos. It's always a pleasure to spend this two-hour period with you every single day where you can learn, laugh, and interact. And remember, now you can send us messages. We got a message from Anix the other day. And I got to tell you something. A lot of you guys said that it was a great idea. You said, oh, man, brilliant. I love it. Let's do this. But then I heard those crickets. Th then the only person who sent me a voice message was Anix. So firstly, a nice round of applause for Anix. Because if you'll recall, if you'll recall, Anix was under the weather when she left us that message. So hopefully she's feeling better. I hope you're feeling great, Anix. And guys, remember, if you want to send me a voice message, you can do that. You can do it on Instagram. I found a way. I just record my screen and then I bring it into my computer and I try and, you know, adjust the sound and all of that. So it sounds excellent. And Anix, as I said, despite her cold, remember, we have two options here, despite or in spite of, but don't mix them up. So despite or in spite of her cold, su resfriado, she did a wonderful job. I urge you guys to do the same. And speaking of receiving messages, a lot of times I get messages that are written messages, and I like to share those with you guys as well. So cue the epic music. This is a message from Bobby. I'm just going to change Bobby's name. Why not? Okay, Bobby says, maybe my nickname rings a bell to you. Anyway, although my account is anonymous, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Bobby. No es verdad. <laughs> and if I may, pero hablas bien, eh? Ya te veo, Bobby. And if I may, I would like to tell you something. I first met you on Vaughn TV many years ago. Awesome. And quickly realized that you were a great teacher. 
Well, if you guys want to watch a lot of those videos, you can check them out on Vaughn's YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. That you had something different, something special. Oh no, am I the special one like Mourinho? <laughs> thank you, thank you. I assure you that I have had a lot of teachers during all these years that I've been studying and loving the English language. So I can tell the difference. So what Bobby is saying here is, Alberto, I've been around this track a couple of times. Es una expresión que significa, tengo bastante experiencia, he visto esta, you know, he tenido muchos profes, he tenido muchas clases. So, thank you. And then it says, in spite of, hey, lo acabamos de mirar y lo ha usado bien. Yes. In spite of having achieved some of the most important degrees in English qualifications. Congratulations, by the way. I knew that I wanted to keep learning. However, I was missing something. I was tired of the way of teaching the same exercises the same grammar. And suddenly I found you again on Instagram last year after the lockdown and I got hooked on your classes. This is very touching. It's conmovedor, I've got to say, Bobby. That's not your real name, but you know, we're protecting the innocent. Then Bobby says, that's why I want to thank you for making me revive the enthusiasm and be driven again. I would also like to return it to you if possible. I'm a doctor, specialist in gastroenterology. I can't even pronounce that. I could prove it if necessary. No, I believe you. <laughs> Thus, if you need any help or support with topics about medicine, health, COVID, or even any collaboration, I would be more than pleased to help you, especially now that I'm on paternal leave. Well, first, congratulations. You had a kid. <laughs> so congratulations and wow, I think you'll all agree. What a beautiful message over there. Not just beautiful words, but beautifully written. Just written so well. Great, great job. Again, the person's name is not Bobby. I changed the person's name. But thank you, thank you, thank you for that message. Um, you're awesome because you could just rest on your laurels. You guys say the same expression in Spanish. To rest on your laurels, uh, descansan los laureles, I, I believe you say. And you could just do that. And, and you decided not to. You had this thirst for knowledge because qu you're qualified, obviously. You've had lessons and teachers left and right. A tutti plen. And that's wonderful news. And I will look you up. Uh, te buscaré because I always have. I mean, since I was a kid, I've had stomach problems and digestion problems. And now I know that in this field, in este campo, um, there have been many breakthroughs, muchos avances. And speaking of breakthroughs, guys, I've got something to announce. We announced it on the show the other day, and it's really exciting stuff. But we have got Amazon and Alexa. Well, no, Amazon and Alexa. I'm getting confused here. Hold on. Amazon and Ale Amazon's Alexa, ahí está, and Vaughn have teamed up. That's right. We have teamed up, hemos hecho equipo, and we have created a brand new product. Well, I don't want to call it a product, a brand new initiative. Actually, they call it a skill, a skill. And this is an amazing new thing where you can talk to the famous assistant Alexa. But Normally, you just ask her, you know, what time is this movie on? What time is the other thing? And now you can learn English with Alexa. There's an ad I made this morning. I can't find it right now, but you guys, I'm sure if you've been listening to Vaughn Radio all morning, then you can hear uh, this ad. If not, I'll play it a little bit later on in the show. No problem. I'll play it for you in the second part of the show. And you might recognize a couple voices in the radio ad in La Cuña. You'll recognize my voice. Uh, you'll recognize, hopefully, uh, Alexa's voice. And also, I talked my wife into participating as well. Así que oirás la voz de mi mujer. And how do you guys, how do you do it? How do you get involved? Real simple. If you have Alexa as an assistant, all you have to do is, 
y lo voy a decir claramente, de hecho, me dijeron algunos que, su que, que suena Alexa cuando lo decimos. So, you just have to say, Alexa, quiero aprender inglés. And then you can get 30 lessons for free. Well, wait, no, no, no. 30 topics for free, 30 situations. And each of those situations has four different lessons in them. So check it out. You can get started today. All you have to do is say, Alexa, quiero aprender inglés, and you'll be on your way to learning English. And she corrects pronunciation because yesterday my wife and I, we were playing around with it. And I was like, wait a second. I was like, let's try and screw it up on purpose. Let's, let's really test this. No, vamos a cagar la posta. And I, I have a Betty. And I said, ooh. And it said, tienes que suavizar el, it's have. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So if you haven't checked it out, you've got to check it out. We announced it on the show on Friday, but it is working. I've been, as I said, I've been uh, experimenting with it all weekend. And it's a, a lot of fun, and it's a, a new way to learn English using this cutting-edge technology. As I said before, we were talking about breakthroughs, avances. This is an amazing breakthrough. Also, guys, just want to remind you, you've got a trivia night coming up right around the corner. I'm definitely going. I know a lot of people who are going. And this is a trivia night with the one and only Richard Vaughn. Hey there. It's time for another Vaughn Radio Trivia Night. Do you know who's hosting this time? I'll give you a clue. He's the Texan who started this company. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. I think you know me, and I know a lot of you. Did you say Richard Vaughn? Right on. Join us February 1st at Roll Madrid, Calle de Amaniel 23 for another Vaughn Radio Trivia Night, hosted by the one and only Richard Vaughn. It's gonna be tons of fun. And it's gonna be magical as well. I hope you guys can make it. It is our next Vaughn Radio Trivia Night. It's February 1st, 2023. It's at 8.30 p.m. and it's at Roll Madrid, which is a great place where you can go. It's a restaurant and brewery, and you can have tons of fun with your classmates and with your teachers. I think it's one of the coolest nights in Madrid, especially for language learners. So even if you're not in Madrid and you can make it, you know, you can arrange to be here on a Wednesday. I know it isn't easy. Do it. And those of you who live in Madrid, you have no excuses, as my buddy Fitz says. All right. Well, guys, let's get into some challenges here on today's show. I think it's time for today's pop Quiz. 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 That's right. That's right, amigos. It is our pop quiz only on the show with no name. And today we're going to be taking a look at some b-ball. I'm talking about basketball. So this is for all you ballers out there. Do you know this word? Ballers? Hmm, interesting one. All right. Well, a baller is a basketball player, a football player, a baseball player. But also it's, it's uh, become synonymous with somebody with money. Are you a baller or what? Are you balling? So it's it's interesting because since they make a lot of money now in the United States, it doesn't just mean, oh, are you a baller? No, I've never played basketball in my life, but I've got a lot of money, right? So that that's another use of this word baller. 
and you'll hear it if you like hip hop like I do. Well, you'll hear it in tons of hip hop songs. All right. Well, today we're going to be taking something out of Speak Basketball. This is just one of the many amazing materials you can get from Vaughn Tienda. It's in collaboration with Ricky Rubio and Alberto de Miguel, who's a great guy. I met I met him at the book fair. And I'm going to be taking this right out of this book. If you love basketball, you'll love this book. It's called Speak Basketball. And you can download the audio as with many of our Vaughn materials. And don't forget too, this book is the milk too, is now available. It's been selling like hotcakes. I guess people like this title more than the remilk, or maybe you like the cover more, or I know, maybe you like the fact that it has audio now. So that's just two of the amazing materials you can pick up at the Von Tienda. I was by the Von Tienda the other day. I stopped by and I was signing and stamping some books. So if you go by the, the Von Tienda in Madrid at Orense Street, you you can get one signed by me. I signed, I don't know, a handful of books of each one of my books and I put my Alberto Alonso approved stamp. All right, well, I want you to use the word today Somebody, uh, it's a word that we use for somebody who appeals to all audiences. So let me give you an example. Somebody like Cristiano or Messi to, to talk about uh, soccer, okay? It doesn't matter where you go, okay? You may love the player because of he's not on your team because he is on your team, right? Those uh, Putting all that aside, it's that player that goes to an away stadium and gets applauded. That's that. That's what I'm. That's the what I'm looking for today. So it's somebody or something that appeals to everybody. Everybody finds it attractive. Everybody's interested. Okay. It says algo que gusta a la multitud. I remember, you know, when the Bulls, the the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan, when they came to play against the New Jersey Nets, antes de que eran los Brooklyn Nets. I remember going. And you don't think that we were cheering for, I mean, okay, I, New Jersey was the home team, but everybody, w w when Michael Jordan was flying through the air and slam dunking it and all that jazz, you can guarantee everybody in the audience was enjoying it. It appealed to everyone. Gusto a todos. So that's the word I want you to give me, but I don't just want you to give me a word. As always, I want you to give it to me in context and preferably in a context that makes sense to you or to anybody. And folks, let's go on over to our chat room over here. We've got a lot of students on board checking in, saying hello. What's up, amigos? Welcome. Welcome to our chat room. If you'd like to join us, that's great. If you can't, we love you just the same. Let's see. Born to Iron Man in the house. Presente. And he says, good eye, mates, in his best Australian accent. Good eye, mate. Good eye. Good eye. Born to Iron Man. Vero says, morning, beautiful people. It's freaking freezing outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's nippy. We say it's chilly. It's nippy. It's another way to say freezing. But that doesn't mean we can't have a great time together. Well, thank God the show's not outside. <laughs> I mean, it's cold outside, but thankfully... Uh, we do the show indoors for now. Maybe they'll cut the budget and we'll have to do it outside. <laughs> but then I think we would have to move the show down to Almeria or a place where there's nice weather all year round. She says, let's grand the bull by the horns. Up and Adam. I imagine it's a typo. Let's grab the bull by the horns. Up and Adam. Awesome. Vero, welcome aboard. Oscar. Oscar says, morning, guys. Welcome to 2023 Blue Monday. I don't even know what that means, Oscar. Okay, I'm sure AA is going to cheer us up with another amazing show with no name. Thanks. Blue Monday. That sounds like Black Friday. I don't I wouldn't trust that stuff. Just days are days. That's the way it works, you know? Monsa says, morning, guys. A cup of joe and listening to the show with no name. What a way to start the week. I think I smell a totally native there. <laughs> A cup of joe. It's a very native way to say a cup of coffee. If he has, I don't say cup of, a cuppa. I want a cup of joe. Cuppa. In, in English, Americano, if you say you want a cuppa, 
Se puede, puede ser té o café, pero es C-U-P-P-A, cuppa. Cuppa. Yeah, we don't say the of. We say the of as a. Uh. We've looked at that pronunciation thing before. Eduardo. Eduardo says, good morning, guys. Awfully cold today here in Valencia. Well, if it's cold in Valencia, well, then the rest of Spain is screwed. <laughs> Let me also remind you guys, it is winter. <laughs> cold in winter is normal. What's not normal is, I, mean, I love it. I love sitting outside in my t-shirt, you know, having an aperitivo. But, uh, you know, <laughs> everything to everything. Turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn. There's Nihad. There he is. He says, you cannot change yesterday. You cannot predict tomorrow. Today is the only gift you have. Good morning, Alberto and mates. Nihad, thank you for the positivity. And you're so right. That's why you got to live in the moment. The past is gone. Reminds me of the musical Rent. No day but today. Forget, regret. Your life is yours to miss. No other road, no other way. No day but today. You gotta check it out. It's got that same message, the musical Rent by Jonathan Larson. Speaking of positivity, there's ESD checking in. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, classmates. Let's make it a great day. No doubt in my mind we're gonna have a great day. I can feel it. Monse says, what a poet, Nihad. That's why it's called the present, because it's a gift. Ooh, you guys are being really creative today. I love it. There's Laura. Laura says, good morning. Wonderful show with no namers. Let's warm this freezing cold morning together. Having a magical time. I second the motion. There's Chris Van Roll. She says, morning, Alberto and friends. I totally agree, Monse. What a better way to start the week. By the way, bravo, Bobby. I bet my bottom dollar that a lot of us feel the same way. Well, send us a message, guys. I know I speak for everybody when I say we'd love to hear from you. I can guarantee it. I'd love to hear from you. And I believe, you know, your fellow students, too. Laura says, listening to the show with no name with all of you guys really hits the spot. <laughs> That in el clavo, great expression. I'm going to write it down for my videos to hit the spot. I love it. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> you guys give me content too, which, by the way, if you're not following Vaughn, following my buddies here on Vaughn Radio and following me, you're missing out because we are sharing tons of content. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Jesus says, cold in winter. Maybe it's climate change. Eh, maybe. Or maybe it's supposed to be cold in winter, I guess. I guess it depends on where you live, right? Let's see. Uh, 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 who else have we got here? Jesus says, I love when you wing in this way. Okay, I like what you're doing there, Jesus. Me encanta lo que has hecho. I love it when you wing it like that. Mejor, más natural. To wing it, improvisar. <laughs> Hey, great word, Jesús. See, you got the word. This is, por esto quiero que uséis siempre frases completas. Why? Porque entonces sabemos no solo que sabemos la palabra, pero también estamos usando estamos con la preposición correcta, como hay que usarla. Okay, so, did anybody get this? Nobody got today's pop quiz? It's a very logical one. Someone who appeals to all audiences. That, that player that gets cheered by the other team. Because everybody loves genius. You know, if somebody's a great artist, it might not be your favorite. Maybe you're like, I don't like modern art. But this guy, this girl, this gal appeals to everyone. Right? Appealing is attractivo. So if you appeal to someone right? Then, of course, you're attractive. All right, well, nobody got it. I'm going to give it to you. That, it looks like you guys got to pick up a copy of Speak Basketball. You can pick it up at Von Tienda. It's vontienda.com, where you can pick up all kinds of materials. If you're looking for courses or more information about what we do, you can go to our main website. It's Grupo Von dot com. 
But if you're just looking for materials, you can go right to vontienda.com. Just depends what's appealing to you. Appealing, attractivo. All right, well, the word is crowd pleaser. And the perfect example, Michael Jordan was undeniably, nadie lo niega, a crowd pleaser. Uno que complacía al público. A crowd pleaser. Que tiene todo el público comiendo de la mano. Guys, we have to go to our first commercial break. I can't believe it. Time is just flying by on today's show. When we come back, we've got so much to do. So we're just going to take a quick break and we'll be back in a flash. So stick around. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name. They tell me the show with no name is a crowd pleaser. Well, it's interesting because if you think about it, I've got people from all walks of life. Todas las condiciones sociales. Seriously. I've got like major politicians and ballers and I've got everyday people like me. You know, I'm I'm in the normal people category. But it's cool. I think it's cool that we've got people from all around the world who join us. And as I said, from all walks of life. Nosotros decimos walks of life. It's a pleasure to have you all here with us. And as I always say, you guys contribute to this show. You guys are such a huge part of this show. And I urge you to interact with us even, even when you can't listen in live. You can always follow along. That's the way I've designed all the different sections so that you can learn with us. Even if it's a 10-year-old episode, you'll still be able to learn English and play along with our challenges. And speaking of challenges, I got it. I've located, e ubicado, I've located the Alexa radio ad that I made this weekend Again, if you want to give me some feedback, uh, I'm not really, um, I guess I am a producer. I produce a podcast. Uh, I don't call myself a producer, but I produced this ad with the help of my wife and with a little help uh, from, so we can, you can say with the help of or with a little help from, los dos te valen como has visto, with a little bit of help from Alexa as well. And uh, well, let's see how my wife did. I personally think she did a stand-up job. A stand-up job is un buen trabajo. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I was telling you about before, something I'm so proud of, and I believe it's great because Vaughn is on the cutting edge. Again, Baugan estamos en la vanguardia otra vez. This is us with Amazon's Alexa. 
Ahora puedes aprender inglés con Baugan y Alexa de Amazon. Solo tienes que decir... Alexa, quiero aprender inglés. Bienvenido a Aprende Idiomas con Alexa. Hoy vas a poder aprender lecciones de inglés nivel iniciación con Alexa en colaboración con Baugan. Podrás aprender desde nuevo vocabulario a pronunciación y mucho más. Cada lección contiene secciones de práctica y de preguntas. Empecemos. Veamos ahora cinco actividades con el verbo ir. To go. Ir al gimnasio es. To go to the gym. La G de. Gym. Suena casi como una H. To go to the gym. Dilo tú. To go to the gym. Correcto. Eso es. Practica inglés con Baugan y con Alexa de Amazon. Acuérdate, solo tienes que decir... Alexa, quiero aprender inglés. Esto sí que es un... Buen comienzo. Te toca. All right, there you go, folks. It's that easy. All you have to say is, Alexa, quiero aprender inglés. And let me know. As you guys know, I love feedback. That's why I was... I'm, even though I didn't create it or anything, but I can pass on that feedback to the people responsible for it. So... Uh, let me know how it works. As I said, it's uh, 30 times four. That's 120 lessons just waiting for you after you say that simple sentence. But folks, we've got another challenge lined up for you and it's today's Say What? Say What? what? That's right, amigos. That's right. It's our Say What soundbite here on the show with no name. This is where you practice listening, summing things up, expressing yourself in English, and so much more. All right, amigos. We're going to take a look at it. Quick comment over here from our buddy, Born to Iron Man. And he says, and Born to Iron Man, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for using things in context because we were able to identify a little mistake, something maybe that I should have explained and I didn't, so I will right now. So Born to Iron Man says, hey mates, do you think Alberto is a crowd pleaser person? No doubt, it's not an adjective. So it's a noun, he's a crowd pleaser. El person no hace falta ahí. So, but you see guys, do you know how we know that? Because Born to Iron Man went the extra mile. To go the extra mile is dar más de lo que se espera de ti. And he said, I'm going to try and use it now. He used it a little bit incorrectly, but if he hadn't used it incorrectly, none of us, well, I, I would, none of you would have known that, well, maybe you would have, but you get what I'm saying. So thank you for using it, Born to Iron Man, and for pointing out that this is a noun. He's a crowd pleaser. The new iPhone, it can be an object too. The new iPhone is a crowd, hey, The new Alexa, Amazon, and Vaughn collaboration is a crowd pleaser. Ahí lo tienes más contexto imposible. All right, well, let's listen to today's Say What soundbite. As always, you're going to hear this soundbite four times. You'll have four chances to write down what you hear. Are you ready? This is the first lesson. The first listen, excuse me. She was beginning to get fed up with it and started telling me to get a job, proper job and stuff like that when I started to work. So <laughs> it's just as well, I kind of stuck at it and didn't take her advice. <laughs> All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Interesting, 
I don't want to say too much because I want to hear from you guys. I don't, I, well, everybody could use some practice summing things up. No, a todos nos vendría bien. Everybody could use a little practice on being concise, conciso, but being descriptive at the same time. That's the goal. You don't, you want to, you don't want to be so concise. You're like, so you didn't give me any information. It's that that middle ground between being concise, but being clear and being descriptive, using your words, right? Words are powerful. Of course they are. Words start wars. Empiezan guerras, you know? So um, I'll play it for you a second time right now, and we'll see what you guys heard. Is everybody ready? Okay, this is the second listen of today's Say What Soundbite. She was beginning to get fed up with it and starting telling me to get a job, proper job and stuff like that when I started to work. So <laughs> she's just as well, I kind of stuck at it and didn't take her advice. <laughs> All right, there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some information. I hear like a some kind of nervous laughter, right? Because there, there's different kinds of laughter, isn't there? There's a guffaw. <laughs> That's a guffaw, a giggle. <laughs> But this is like a nervous laugh. I mean, it's a giggle, but it's a nervous giggle, right? We've got different risitas or giggles. But a guffaw, for example, is one of those that grandpa used to let out. <laughs> it's the best way to describe it. In fact, let's take a look. Types of laughs. And I can tell you which ones are the most common. A belly laugh. A belly laugh is de, de, de la tripa, right? A cackle, a cackle is how a witch laughs. <laughs> you know that kind of like cackle it's called. If somebody tells you the, that you cackle, that's not good. <laughs> Nobody wants to cackle. Everybody likes to giggle. <laughs> Son risitas tontas, right? Uh, let's see, chuckle. Again, a chuckle is like a soft, suppressed laugh. So it's like, <laughs> right? So this could be a chuckle, a giggle, well, a giggle, a foolish or nervous laugh. <laughs> so a little bit similar. A guffaw, like la primera que te dije. A burst of loud, hearty laughter. <laughs> Howl. <laughs> That's that laugh when it's unrestrained and it's got that. <laughs> That's your howling. Estás aullan, aullan, maullan. Siempre me, me hago un lío. Snicker. You know Snickers? Well, Snicker is, uh, you know, the the bar, uh, the the chocolate bar I'm talking about, no el bar, <laughs> same word, Snickers. Well, to Snicker is reír eh, disimuladamente, like a disrespectful laugh. Like if your mom says, you are grounded, estás castigado. Like, <laughs> I'm snickering. To snort, <laughs> My daughter snorts when she laughs like a little piggy. <laughs> uh, what else? Can I find it? A roar. That's another one. Un <laughs> rugido similar to a guffaw. So did you know there were so many ways to laugh? Unbelievable. And another way to say something's funny, that's a knee slapper. That's a knee slapper. Eso es para, eso es un, eh, un pega rodillas. <laughs> If it's funny, you're right. A, a knee slapper. Usa esa en tu clase de inglés. Your teacher say, tells you a joke. You say, that was a knee slapper. Se va a quedar de piedra. <laughs> All right, let's see what you guys got over here in our Say What Soundbite. Uh, Monse is kicking off the comments, and she says, oh, my God, that's a taut. Mm -mm -mm, Monse, te, fal te sobra una T ahí. You've got an extra T. Because tough acaba con GH, T O U G H. So, oh my God, that's a tough one. I heard a British young lady talking slang very fast. If I'm not wrong, she was talking about to get a job and move forward. So, I'm going to make a couple little um, corrections here, Monse, a little, some tweaks, which are great because we can help not just yourself, but the rest of the students. Oh my God, that's a tough one. Tough, T-O-U-G-H. Vamos a pronunciarlo, por favor. Tough, okay? Porque parece que estás entre thought, pensamiento, que entonces te faltaría una H al principio. But tough, es lo que querías decir. That's a tough one. I heard a British young lady talking slang very fast. Perfecto. 
If I'm not wrong, she was talking about getting a job. So when we use to talk about, siempre va un gerundio después, okay? She was talking about getting a job and moving forward. Y así ambos verbos hacen juego. Well, Monse, you are spot on. And you're right, it is a tough one. But I agree with Monse. I agree with Monse when she says that it is uh, a British lady, a young lady from Britain. I second the motion. Speaking of young ladies, here's Chris Valrol, and she says, I heard a young girl who's talking a mile a minute, at least for me. Well, Monse, I think both you and Chris agree on that. So she says, I could only get a few words, job, start, and maybe take your advice, but not the gist of it. Well, Chris... El hecho que has dicho the gist of it, buenísimo. <laughs> El hilo, la idea principal. So even though Chris didn't get it, she expressed herself perfectly in telling me, telling me in very like, you know, eloquent English that she didn't get it. So excellent job, Chris. See, it's not always about getting it. It's about telling someone in an eloquent way, oof, that was tough. I didn't catch this. Maybe the end was, a that's the goal. It's not the goal isn't always, oh, I, I missed it. No, okay, well, tell me that. Tell me that in your best English. Oscar says, I reckon it's a British female. Me gusta ese reckon. Es muy británico también. <laughs> oh, I reckon, de hecho, Oscar, I'm going to read your comment in British English. Oh, I reckon it's a British female talking about the first job she gets. I couldn't understand anything else because she was talking as she was spitting it out. <laughs> Great job, Oscar. Wonderful. Nihad. Nihad says a sweet British accent talking about someone who started to get fed up of her. And then he told her to look for a job. And when she started working at first, or firstly, it went well. But later she got stuck. Nihad, you are on the right track as well. You guys are doing a wonderful job. Let's see, any more comments before we move on to our spelling bee? Let's see, Laura. Laura says, I heard the voice of a British young woman explaining how someone else started to get fed up and told her to get a proper job. Good ear, Laura. Yes. I'm not sure whether she took her advice or not. Excellent job all around, folks. I am impressed. Even if you don't get it, you guys were able to express yourselves beautifully in English. And I think that's the goal. But you're going to hear it another two times. So don't fret. Don't worry. And folks, I think it's time for today's Spelling Bee. Spelling Bee. <laughs> Spelling B. Spelling B. Spelling B. Spelling That's right. That's right, folks. It is the spelling bee only on the show with no name. And this is one of the hardest. Hablando de tough, uh, como Monse dijo, this is one of the toughest parts of the show. But uh, you guys will come through to come through complete. I know you will. Let's see a couple comments before we kick off our spelling bee over here. The first comment is from our buddy ESD. And he says, hey, it's a great way to remember it, ESD. He says, I was snickering while eating my Snickers candy bar. Excellent job. See, that's what I mean. It, um, ESD, you will never forget that word. As long as you have in your head, <laughs> you know, eating your candy bar. Great, great, great. That's exactly what I want, guys. Uh, you say blue Monday. I say rock and roll Monday. <laughs> Chris because you guys are rocking and rolling. Chris says, now, when I hear a British speaking, or a British person speaking, I can't help smiling 
because you come to my mind doing your British accent and impersonation. Oh, yes, yes. Well, guys, if you don't follow me on social media, thanks for reminding me, Chris. Yesterday, I posted a video of me doing a character speaking British English, Pensington Chillingsworth III, Esquire, at your service, and myself. And I go through about, I don't know, eight or nine words, maybe 10, 10 words, and I pronounce them in British English. And then Pence, my friend, pronounces them in British English. One of the examples, I say, I'm going to park my car in the garage. I'm going to park it in the garage. He says, garage, garage. So check out that video. It's actually on Twitter. I think it has like 10,000 visits and on YouTube and Instagram. I mean, it's, uh, usually I get about 10,000 views per video and I'm, I'm adding it up on all the different platforms. So this one is performing very, very well, right? Okay, uh, so uh, great, Chris, it's funny too. Me, every time I hear a British person, I, I, there's a little part of me that chuckles too. <laughs> I think we're talking a lot about laughs today, aren't we? Uh, let's see, there's my dad. I was wondering where you were, sir. <laughs> he says, good morning, Alberto, family and friends. Greetings from Greenwood Lake, New York, the greatest city in the world after El Marchal. That's right, El Marchal de Lubrin. My dad's hometown, his birthplace, and, uh, well, a place that uh, all my family's roots came from. Uh, between El Marchal and Sicily and Naples, that's that's where my family started. That's where they, they settled, and all of them, obviously, not all of them, but most of them went to the New World, the Americas, and to search, well, obviously, to search for a better life. Now it's debatable. <laughs> you know, you don't know. What is a better life? Depends on what you're looking for in life, doesn't it? But there's no doubt that at that time, many people were going there for opportunity because it was a country that was being built and it needed a lot of people to help build that country. So that's a, that's one of the, the, the beauties of that American dream that my dad pursued and eventually got. So awesome stuff. And he's still learning. He's still here with us learning. And I think that is admirable. All right, let's take a look. Today, I'm going to give you seven words. Why? Because some of them are acronyms and they're just three letters. Okay, so I'm going to, you're going to get seven words. The last four are acronyms. So the first three are not acronyms. No hay que escribirlos todos en mayúscula. Are you ready? This is round one. The first word is E-R-N-E-S-T. The second one is H-E-N-R-Y. The third one is S-H-A-C-K-L-E-T-O-N. The next one is an acronym. It's C-V-O. The fifth one is O-B-E. The sixth one is F-R-G-S. And the seventh one is F-R-S-G-S. Whoa. Whoa. There you go. I told you I was going fast, but don't worry. I'm going to go through it in just a moment at a, a normal speed, a normal pace. Otra forma de decir velocidad es pace. De hecho, you just got to remember the Pacers, a basketball team, the Pacers. All right. Well, it looks like we've got somebody who can handle this pace. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your classmate. Born to Iron Man. Awesome. Born to Iron Man. You nailed it. You dotted your I's. You crossed your T's. And you have proved once again why you are born to spelling bee. You're born to do many things, it seems. <laughs> There's no challenge that's too big for you. And, well, it kind of reminds me of the person we're looking at today in our spelling bee. All right. Well, I'm I'll tell you right now, this is a person's full name over here, okay? It's a person's full name, but I broke it up into seven parts, okay? So it, it would be like Alberto, one, Gustavo, two, Alonso, number three, Lembo, four, right? So this is what I've done. I've, I've broken the person's name up into seven parts, but it's really one name. Are you ready? This is the second round of today's Spelling Bee. The first word is E-R-N, E-S-T space 
uh, not space, excuse me, done. Okay, next one. <laughs> H-E-N-R-Y is the second word. The third one is S-H-A-C-K-L-E-T-O-N. The fourth one is C-V-O, that's an acronym, C-V-O. The fifth one is O-B-E. The sixth one is F-R-G-S. And the seventh one is F-R-S-G-S. All right. We are looking at the life of Ernest Henry. Oh, excuse me. Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton, CVO, OBE, FRGS, FRSSGS. I can't even say his full name. <laughs> so, yes, we are looking at somebody. Hey, born to Iron Man, you remind me of this guy, an explorer. All of you are explorers. But yeah, today we're looking at. Ernest Shackleton, and this was because today, in the year 1909, his expedition found the magnetic South Pole, right? The South Pole at Polo Sur, I think you say, and the North Pole, que es el Polo Norte. And you know what my favorite pole uh, is? El Polo de Limón. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Well, that's not called a polo. A polo is not called a pole in English. No te, no te quiero. <laughs> I was trying to do a Spanglish joke there. No, no, no. It's called an ice pop. I believe the British call it an ice lolly. <laughs> so we call it an ice pop or a popsicle. That's that ice cream that's not made with ice cream. You know, it's made with uh, natural fruit juice, right? <laughs> oh, man. Is anybody else's mouth watering talking about lemon ice pops? Oh, man. All right. So, yes, sir, Ernest Henry Shackleton is his name. Then after his name, he's got CVO, which stands for uh, 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 CVO. It's the Royal Victorian Order. Ordre Royal de Victoria. Okay, that's the French pronunciation. Then he's got the OBE, which is the, um, the monarch, the most excellent order of the British Empire. OBE. Like, if you're a big shot, una persona importante, you get these. Then FRGS is, uh, the Royal Geographic society. So these are all part of his title, by the way. And then the last one is FRSGS, which is the Royal Scottish Geographical Society. So talk about a guy with a lot of titles and a guy who explored uncharted territory. Creo que hay un videojuego que se llama Uncharted. Well, Uncharted means que no está en el mapa todavía because we need people like Ernest, Sir Ernest Shackleton, or people like our buddy, Born to Iron Man. Folks, we've got to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. So stick around.
Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name on Vaughn Radio. Don't forget, guys, right before today's show, you got Fitz's program, No Excuses. It's the perfect way to warm up for this show, where we go a mile a minute. After today's show, you've got Jules Linares and her program, Let's Get Random, which is another way to keep the energy going after today's show. And we've got tons of programs all afternoon long here on Vaughn Radio. Make sure you download our free app and you never, ever, ever miss your favorite shows. Plus, you can get them wherever you get your podcasts. Also, remember, you've got my self-produced podcast for your English. I can't believe it. So many milestones. Marcadores. So many milestones. FYI, we'll be hitting in about a, in a couple months, un par de meses, we'll be hitting, llegando a, you ready for this? A half a million downloads. Half a million, medio millón. That is mind-blowing for a podcast that I started doing out of my daughter's room. That's right, guys. The original studio for FYI was my daughter's room. It all happened during the COVID thing. And uh, and we didn't really have room. And since my daughter wasn't using the room, toma double trouble, sitio, habitación. Uh, since we didn't, my daughter wasn't using the room during the day. It was just where she slept. Her crib was there, la cuna. That ended up being my office. And I, I also remember doing some show with no names from my kitchen, amigos. Well, hey, COVID, you had to do something. The show must go on. And now, well, uh, since it has happened, I, I used this, like many people have, they've used this negative thing and turned it into a positive. I've learned how to produce um, audio and a lot of people are, are enjoying and, and, and also learning with my podcast the same way they are with uh, the show with no name. So if you like the show with no name, you'll also love For Your English. It's a little bit more serious. I still joke around. I still sing but I try and stay focused on one topic. So last week we looked at radio, the week before motivation. I try and, you know, of, of course we always, we always talk about all different things. We talk about what comes up, lo que surja, no? But at the same time, I try to stay focused. All right, well, we need to focus here or we're going to run out of time like we always do. Si no tienes ese phrasal verb, tienes que tenerlo. We're going to run out of time. Lo irás en mil canciones. The first one that comes to mind is Muse. Our time is running out. Our time is running out. It's time for homophones. Homophones, homophones on the show with no name. It's homophones time because homophones rhyme. They sound the same on the show with no name. The show with no name. Homophones on the show with no name. Cause homophones tap, it's homophones rhyme. They sound the same on the show with no name. 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 That's right, that's right, amigos. You know it. It is homophones only on the show with no name. And here's where we look at two words. And you guys have to tell me what these words mean. Well, you don't have to tell me what they mean. I'm going to tell you that. What you have to do is tell me what they are. You have to identify the words and tell me if they sound alike. You got two jobs. What are the two words? And do they sound exactly the same or not? That's pretty straightforward. Straightforward. Sin mucha complicación. It's pretty easy. The first word is tamaño in Spanish. Okay? Tamaño. Okay? It's also talla. So if you go to a store, tienes que buscar tu talla. Okay? So talla, tamaño, if we're talking about physical dimensions of something. Okay, and the second word is suspiros o suspirar en tercera persona. Okay, suspiros 
o suspirar, ella suspira, right, en tercera persona. So, what are those two words? Ah, the first one is, you know, what it says on your pants or your shirt, el tama, la talla. And the other one is, ah, en plural, dos de esos. All right, there you go, folks. Those are your words. You tell me if they're homophones or not. Also, I'm going to play the Say What soundbite for you for the third time. Please write down what you hear. She was beginning to get fed up with it and started telling me to get a job, proper job and stuff like that when I started to work. So <laughs> she's just, well, I kind of stuck at it and didn't take her advice. <laughs> All right, there you go, there you go, amigos. As always, you'll get one more chance to write down what you hear. All right, let's see. We've got some comments coming in here. And uh, let's see. Born to Iron Man says, what Shackle what did Shackleton in, okay, uh, ya veo. What Shackleton did, acuérdate, sujeto verbo, what Shackleton did in Antarctica was unimaginable. Yeah, well, he was an explorer and really, really going to uncharted territories. Uh, let's see, ESD, this is a great lesson today. I'm cracking up over the comments. Great, so glad to hear it, ESD. Let's see, Born to Iron Man says, kudos, Alberto. Kudo, uh, thank you, enhorabuena, kudos for all the downloads. Laura, well, it's not just downloads, guys. If I was just getting a lot of downloads and no comments and no feedback, I'd be worried. But I'm getting a lot of feedback, a lot of participation, and a lot of downloads in the show, just like the show with no name, just like my social media, continues to grow. And I got to say, a huge part of that is you guys. So thank you. Thank you for spreading the word. I don't have a marketing department personally. <laughs> Vaughn does. I don't have a marketing department. So anytime you spread the word, you are helping me out. You're doing me a solid. Como se dice en inglés. Eso es muy nativo. To do somebody a solid is hacerle un, un favor muy bueno. All right. So thank you, Laura. Born to Iron Man. Uh, thank you, ESD. Congratulations on the downloads. So much, so much uh, love that I get from you guys and so many downloads. ¿Ves? Contable versus incontable. <laughs> So much love, so many downloads. Okay, let's see. Uh, 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 the first person to participate here in our homophone section is Salvador. And Salvador says, okay, the first word is correct. The second one is not correct. Technically, it's not correct, right? Because I said, I didn't say suspiro. I said suspiros. O suspiro en tercera persona. So lleva ese al final sin, right? So we're missing an S there. That is the correct word, but it's not. You, you catch my drift. It's good. Or else we're not doing the same thing here. We got to be talking about the same words, guys, okay? So step one. Uh, ESD says, we are loving this. Richie Pats would be rocked. Richie Pats, I think. Do I, is Richie Pats one of our... Our uh, our show with no name. Does that name ring about uh, Richie? I'm a little bit confused, ESD. Give me some context, though, por favor. <laughs> Let's see, Laura as well. Laura, um, you guys are, today we had a listening problem here, it seems, because nobody is giving me the word in the plural. I thought I said suspiros. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Or suspira, tercera persona, ella suspira. You know what? We can always check. <laughs> Lo bueno de tenerlo todo grabado. We'll know if I said it. Let's see. Lupe. Lupe says the words are mm and mm. Okay, Lupe. These are the right words. Now we're talking. Ahora sí. All right. And Lupe says, yeah, because we can't even begin to talk about it if we don't have the, the same words. You know, if we're talking about different words and, you know, it's like I'm talking about blue, you're talking about red. Wrong things. So Lupe, Lupe says the correct words, and she says they don't sound alike. Okay, what about you guys? What do you think? Uh, let's see. We've got Chris Valrol. Those are the correct words. Excellent. And she says they could be homophones, but I'm not going to bet the farm. No voy a apostar la casa o el, el rancho. <laughs> nice, nice one, Chris. All right, so really I only have two people 
who have participated here, right? Two people that have got it right that I can say yes or no here, right? Because the other ones is we're not talking about the same words. So Lupe says that the two words don't sound the same. And Chris Valrol says the words sound the same. Okay, well, I'm gonna say both words. What's your size? What size are you? Try this one on for size. Pruébate esta para ver el tamaño. Esa es buena expresión. Try this one on for size. Es que tiene mucha preposición ahí. Try this one on for size. A ver cómo te cabe esta y ya vamos viendo, right? Size. What size do you wear? Size. Okay, that is a the size of that house. No es solo eh, talla, pero es tamaño. Wow, look at the size of that house. It's huge. It's a mansion. Size. S-I-Z-E. Say it with me. Muy importante en esta sección. Okay, size. Z -Z. Okay, size. Okay, the second word is the word sci. Vamos a decirlo en presente como nos disteis primero. And that word is sci sin la S. Okay, sci. Ah, it feels good when you sigh. She said it feels good when she sighs. Do the words sound the same? Okay, I'm going to give you both of them right next to each other. The first word, tamaño, talla, is size. And the second word is size. Do they sound the same? Absolutely, positively. Great effort to all of you. Chris, bet the farm. <laughs> bet the farm, Chris. You can do it because the two words sound the same. The word size, talla, tamaño, sounds exactly the same as size. Suspiros, en plural. Si no, no, no suena igual. So excellent, excellent job there to all of you. But the first one to really nail it there was Chris. Also, ESD, better late than never. You're on fire today, ESD. And ESD is talking about the, um, the Say What soundbite. And he says, it sounds like a British woman complaining that her mother was telling her to get a job and that she didn't and that and that she did not like the job esd spot on better late than never as we said wonderful wonderful brenda brenda says great show thank you thank you this weekend i finally answered all the comments on youtube i'm usually on twitter on instagram but I realized that I had like 50 comments on YouTube that I hadn't answered on my videos. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. I'm very lucky that I spend my weekend mornings answering amazing comments from my students saying, hey, I love the show, it's a lot of fun, all of that jazz. So excellent job in the homophones section. I think it's time to move on now, though. It's time for Name That Movie. Name That that movie. That's right, that's right, amigos. It's name that movie only on the show with no name. Let's see what we've got in store. Today, adelante por venir, programado, in store. We always look at this word. I use it a lot because I always like to have different things prepared for you, ready to go, in store. Here is the trailer. Let's see if you guys can recognize the movie based on the trailer. If not, we'll go into a scene and we'll extract some English from that scene. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> They influence our decisions without us knowing it. They numb our senses without us feeling it. They control our lives without us realizing it. And I can't tell you the last two words because it's the title of the movie. So yeah, if I give you that, I'm giving it away. Lo estoy soplando. I'm giving it away. Like the chili peppers. Give it away, give it away, give it away, nah. Give it away, give it... No? Regálalo, soplarlo. So, anybody? I'm waiting for you, Chris Farrol. <laughs> so, they influence our decisions. Influyen. 
en nuestras decisiones. Without us knowing it, sin que lo sepamos. They numb our senses. This is a good word, the word numb. Numb. You might know it from a Linkin Park song. I've become so numb. I can feel you there. I can numb. Right? Great song. Also a U2 song. I feel numb. Too much is not enough. Numb. Numb. They numb our senses. In Tumethin, we don't feel it. If you're numb, you don't feel anything. Speaking of being a cold day, but it's not only literally, it means feelings too, not just, um, you know, oh, my fingers are numb. It's freezing outside. Be muda, numb. They numb our senses without us feeling it. They control our lives without us realizing it. Controlan nuestras vidas sin que nos demos cuenta. They live, viven. All right, and ladies and gentlemen, we've got a winner. Please give it up for Chris. Valrol, a movie queen, she's a movie queen, oh yeah. And Vero as well, we got two movie queens in the house today. Great job. The movie is called They Live. This is a classic horror movie. It came out in 1988 and de Juanito Carpintero. What? Juanito Carpintero, John Carpenter. <laughs> That's a different movie, but same director. The movie is called They Live. They Live. And the movie stars Roddy Rowdy Piper. Huh? Roddy Rowdy Piper. No, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Eso es. Rowdy, <laughs> say that five times fast. His name is Roddy. The, the wrestler, El de Pressing Catch, Roddy Piper, Piper Gaetero. Okay, but Rowdy is like, rah, he makes a lot of noise. He walks in and you know he's there. I forgot this word, Rowdy. I think of young boys playing and they play rough. Alborotado, eh, tumultuoso. Yeah, tumultuous, same, same idea. Rowdy. So he was uh, the famous uh, wrestler who wore a kilt. Right, these Scottish um, uh, Scots wear this kilt. I don't know too much about it. So, uh, great movie, classic horror movie. John Carpenter, they live, and he is uh, again. You you've probably seen, you've probably been scared shitless from his movies many times. And scared shitless is a way of saying extremely scared. All right, so let's take a look at the scene I've chosen here for you. I have a wife and kids in Detroit. I haven't seen them in six months. Steel mills were laying people off left and right. And a steel mill is uh, una fabrica de, de acero, steel. It's a kind of metal, right? There are many steel mills in the United States, especially in the Northeast of the United States. So steel mills were laying people off, and to lay off is despedir a gente. They were laying people off left and right. Lo vimos al principio del programa hoy. A tutiplen, por todas partes. They were laying people off left and right. They finally went under. To go under is to go bankrupt, to fail. They finally went under. We gave the steel companies a break when they needed it. Les dimos... Un suspiro, a break, when they needed it. Know what they gave themselves? ¿Tú sabes lo que se dieron a ellos mismos? Raises, aumentos. And be careful because the British say rises. I got a rise, mate. And Americans say I got a raise. So we use different words there. Just be careful. Raise versus rise. She goes, you know what they gave themselves? I said, we bailed them out. Les um, rescataron, right? It says, we gave them a break, which means we helped them. We bailed them out. We les dieron, dimos un suspiro. And you know what they gave themselves? Raises, aumentos. The golden rule, la ley dorada de oro. The golden rule, he who has the gold makes the rules. El que tiene el oro pone las reglas. They close one more factory. We should take a sledgehammer to one of their fancy fucking foreign cars. Okay, so a sledgehammer. 
This is a song by Peter Gabriel. I want to be your sledgehammer. It's a cool video. It's claymation. I remember it from the 80s. Sledgehammer. Almadena. I didn't even. Omazo. Right? It's sledgehammer. It's a tool. Una herramienta. And a great song, again, by Peter Gabriel. I want to be your sledgehammer. <laughs> We're really going back to the 80s today. So he goes, you should take a sledgehammer to one of their fancy fucking foreign cars. Coches de, de exportación, no? De fuera. Fancy es de lujo. And then nada, I love it. The character's name is nada. Nah, te lo iba a explicar, pero nada. <laughs> or swim, que también en español nada. She swims. Well, nada says, you know, you ought to have a little more patience with life. You ought to. Deberías. It's another way of saying you should. But we say you oughta. We don't say you ought to. You know how you know? You, you, you ought to know. You remind me. You oughta. Why I oughta. I remember in the uh, the old cartoons. Mm, yo debería. Why I oughta. Not ought to. Aunque se escribe ought to, it's oughta. <laughs> you know, you ought to have a little more patience in life. Deberías tener un poco más de paciencia en tu vida. And, and Frank says, yeah, well, I'm all out. Y esto viene de to run out of. I'm out. No me queda. I ran out. I'm out of patience. Same idea. And then Frank says, the whole deal, esta, esta película entera, este, esta operación entera, is like some kind of crazy game. Un tipo de, kind of, not kind of, kind of. Some kind of crazy game. They put you at the starting line. Te ponen en... En la línea, la meta, donde empiezas, no la meta, donde empiezas, the starting line. And the name of the game is make it through life. Y el juego se llama, esto es una expresión, the name of the game is, right? The name of the game. The name of the game. That's from a song. I know it is. <laughs> so the name of the game is make it through life. Atravesar la vida. Uh, sobrevivir. Only everyone's out for themselves. And to be out for yourself is solo estás mirando por ti. There, it says everyone's out for themselves. Cada uno está mirando por su cuenta. And looking to do you in at the same time. Y mirando como joderte a ti a la vez. To do you in. Good vocabulary. Okay, man. Here we are. Aquí estamos. You do what you can. You do what you can, mejor dicho. You do what, tú haz lo que vas a hacer, lo que puedas. You do what you can. But remember, I'm going to do my best to blow your ass away. And to blow your ass away is boom, like to shoot you, to explotarte, volarte. I'm going to do my best to blow your ass away. So, how are you going to make it? Entonces, ¿cómo vas a lograrlo? ¿Cómo vas a hacerlo? How are you going to make it? And Nada says, I deliver a hard day's work for my money. I just want the chance. So I deliver. Yo entrego. Yo doy. I give a hard day's work for my money. Okay? And I just want the chance. Solo quiero la oportunidad. And, uh, and she says, it'll come. Vendrá. It'll. Vamos a pronunciarlo. It'll come. It'll. It'll. It's, it will. It'll. Dilo, dilo conmigo mil veces. Hay que decir. It'll. It'll come. Vendrá. I believe in America. Creo en los Estados Unidos. I follow the rules. I think you say acatar. Uh, I'm learning some good Spanish, huh, guys? I follow the rules. Everybody's got their own hard times these days. Y se puede decir hard times, o la palabra que vimos antes con Monse, tough times, porque es doble T. Right? So everybody's got, everybody's tercera persona. Everybody's got their own hard times these days. And uh, wow, this sounds pretty like, I mean, didn't we say this movie is from 1988? Sounds kind of like what's going on right now. I guess that's what makes um, John Carpenter and his movies timeless. Oh, and what, there's a famous line from the movie that was actually ad-libbed. To be ad-libbed is improvisado. And it was ad-libbed by Roddy Piper, the wrestler, Rowdy Roddy Piper. And the line is, 
I've come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> I love that line. I'm here to, I can't, I've come here, he venido aquí to chew bubblegum, masticar chicle, and kick ass. Y, arra, y, peta, y, y dar palizas. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Y me he quedado sin chicle. <laughs> All right, well, folks, we've got so much to do, but the only thing is we just have to take a really quick commercial break. But the good news is when we come back, we are going to look at our Name That Lyric, Double Trouble. We're also going to hear one of my favorite sections, Name That Lyric, where we listen to music. Because as you guys know, music, for me, that's one of the ways I learned Spanish, using music. So that's why I use it as a teaching tool, but all that and much more when we come back. So if I were you guys, I wouldn't even think of going anywhere. Stick around. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name, exclusively on Vaughn Radio. Oh, yeah. That's right, folks. Come on in. Come on in. It's time for the fourth. And final part of today's show, all aboard. All right. Don't forget, folks, right after today's show, you've got tons of great shows. you got Jules Linares and her program, Let's Get Random, followed by the lunchtime show with Rob and Andy. Right after that, you've got Tosh Pasqua and Back to Basics, followed by Jessica Fernandez and the Hour to Empower. Right after that, you've got Guy Williams and Western Civilizations. Then you've got The Salad with Dave Boys. And don't forget about Drive Time with Kyle Miller. Me ha eh? <laughs> well, I wasn't looking at the list. I was just trying to remember all the shows. And folks, remember, download our free app. And this way you can listen to all of your favorite teachers whenever you can. Because I know, you know, and everybody knows that life isn't always routine. Some days we can be here. Some days we can't. Some days when we're here, we're not even present. But we're here. You get what I'm saying. But folks, I hope you're present for the fourth and final part of today's show. In fact, I even put on a little uh, hip-hop beat for you. But you know what? It's not time for some hip hop. It's time for double trouble. Double trouble, baby. Yeah, you know what time it is. Give it up. Double, double trouble. I said double. Double trouble. Double. Double trouble. 
I said double, double trouble. That's right, that's right, folks. It's Double Trouble only on the show with no name. And I got this one. I was watching a documentary with my wife the other day. I think it was on HBO Max or Disney, but I don't remember anymore. But I was watching a documentary and I said, I got it. I've got a double, double trouble. Are you serious? Yeah, a double. No, no, don't cry. It's all right. It's all right. All right, all right. Come on, it's all right. Cheer up, cheer up. It's just a double trouble. I mean, a double, double trouble. And what does that mean? That means you have to use the same word twice, twice. I don't mean the same word four times. I mean double up on two words. So take, take, and go, go. You catch my drift? All right, here we go, my amigos. Good luck. This is reserved exclusively for superstar students. And here we go. Intentaron culparme a mí. Okay. Echarme la culpa, culparme a mí. Sin embargo, dejé el imperdible en la caja fuerte. And imperdible is not unlosable. <laughs> Me encanta eso, imperdible. <laughs> It's unlosable. I've lost many of them, so that's not true. <laughs> unlosable. <laughs> si lo traduces. <laughs> Imperdible. It's unlosable. You'll never lose it. <laughs> All right. So, intentaron culparme a mí. No hacer que yo sea el culpable, el culpable, the culprit. Sin embargo, dejé el imperdible en la caja fuerte. There's your double, double trouble. Good luck. I hope you guys can figure it out. Also, I'm going to give you today's Say What soundbite, which I don't think anybody's gotten yet. I know it's a tough one today, but uh, here's your last chance. And the good news is in about 10, 10 minutes or so, we'll go over it and we'll look at who it is, what they said, and all that jazz. This is the fourth listen of today's Say What soundbite. She was beginning to get fed up with it and started telling me to get a job, proper job and stuff like that when I started to work. So <laughs> it's just as well. I kind of stuck at it and didn't take her advice. <laughs> All right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. As many of you said, a young lady, a British young lady, if I had to say so. And uh, as you guys said earlier, again, these are your words. She's speaking a mile a minute. She's using a lot of slang. All right, well, either way, we're going to take a look at that in a little bit. We just looked at our Say What soundbite, so I think it's time for a section where we learn English with a little humor. It's called You're Joking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what did the guy say when he walked into the bar? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. You get it? Ouch. He walked into the bar. <laughs> Um, you're joking. That's right. That's right, amigos. You're joking. A section where we look at a couple jokes here on the show, and we see if you guys can figure out these jokes. And this is really, I, I'm not checking your sense of humor here. I'm checking your mastery of English vocabulary. How many homophones, how many words with double meanings you know, because these are all puns. These are all words that come from double meanings or words that are pronounced the exact same. So again, you'll find a lot of the stuff in the jokes in the, the double trouble section and the homophone section can, you know, if you're creative, you can come up with jokes. All right. So let's take a look at these jokes. I don't see anybody participating on the double, double trouble. Have I stumped everybody? Ooh, ho, ho, ho. All right. Well, I'll give you some more time to think it through. In the meantime, I'll tell you some of the greatest jokes you've ever heard in your life. Okay, not true, not true. But we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn some English from these jokes. You know, I watched uh, this awesome show yesterday. Yeah, with my wife. As I said, we we watch stuff together sometimes. Uh, you know, when my daughter lets us, cuando nos deja mi hija. And we were watching this awesome show called Origami Wrestling. Okay, wrestling, pressing catch. And origami wrestling, yeah, you know, origami, The when they fold the paper, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Um, it was called origami wrestling. The only thing is it was on pay-per-view. <laughs> ah, 
<laughs> it, it was on pay per view. <laughs> Are you serious? No. <laughs> I'm dying here. It was on pay per view. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> pay per view. <laughs> Sorry, I, I think it's hysterical. <laughs> Did anybody get it? It was on pay-per-view. Okay. <laughs> so it was called Origami Wrestling, and it was on pay-per-view. So pay-per-view, todo se dice junto, te lo estoy diciendo separado para que lo oigas. Pay-per-view es pagas para verlo, es de pago. So like yesterday's final, Real Madrid, Barca, let's not even talk about it, thank you. Um, first of all, the Spanish Super Cup is played in another country. Um, okay, whatever. You, you're not going to convince me that that's normal. I'll tell you that. This is why I've stopped spending a lot of money that I used to spend on soccer because you take it out of Spain, I'm not going to. Come on, man. You, you're taking my team from my city and taking them to play somewhere else where no Spanish person can afford to. Well, I guess some people can afford to go. Yeah, not a good idea. I don't know if uh, Tebas or that bald guy, El, El Calvo, is to listen, but you guys, if you're trying to fuck up football, keep it up. You're doing a great job. I know you're trying to make money. That part's obvious. That That's dead obvious, right? But if you're trying to fuck up football, keep going. It's it's working. It's definitely working. That's my, that's my thoughts on <laughs> I know it's the joking section, but sometimes I get really passionate about stuff. <laughs> so you get it? Pay-per-view? Pay per view. When we say it quickly, like uh, WrestleMania 6 is on pay per view. Pay per view. Vista de papel. Pay per view. Pagas por cada visa, uh, visión, vi, visita. Vez que, vez que lo ves. <laughs> so we watched the awesome show called Origami Wrestling. It was on pay per view. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's see. I just watched um, another thing. My, we watch a lot of stuff. My wife and I, we watch stuff all the time. And we just watched an entire three-day-long arm wrestling match by accident. What? Yeah, yeah, you heard correctly. My wife and I just watched an entire three-day-long, que dura tres días, arm wrestling match by accident. And what is arm wrestling? Well, we just said wrestling is pressing catch. Arm wrestling is hacer un pulso. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, an arm wrestling match, and we watched it by accident. But uh, I got to say something. It turned out to be more gripping than we expected. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> no. No, did anybody get it? It was more grip. That was a snort. Luego digo que mi hija, pero lo hago yo también. All right, did anybody get it? Gripping. All right, well, to grip is agarrar algo, right? To grip it, you're holding it. But if something is gripping, it really captures your attention. Okay, so gripping, fascinante, apasionante. You get it now? Grip, agarrar, el agarre. Arm wrestling, it was gripping. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Fine, fine. All right, one more, one more. What do you call it when a British policeman gets defeated in a wrestling match? Okay, last one, I promise. And then we're going to check. I've got some people participating in the double, double trouble in the say what sound bite. <clears throat> so what do you call... Okay, let me déjame buscar. Estoy escribiendo mal. Okay, here it is. So, what do you call it when a British policeman gets defeated in a wrestling match? Easy. It's a bobby pin. <laughs> <laughs> a bobby pin? Did you get it? No. <laughs> a bobby pin. <laughs> No. Okay. Well, I guess we should look at the word bobby pin first. A bobby pin is uh, orquilla, I think you call it. It's that flat pin that goes in your hair. My daughter, we've got it. My daughter uses them because she has long hair. So we put 
bobby pins in her hair. Pasador, horquilla, it says here too. Thank you, Chris. Pasador. So a bobby pin. Pero donde está la broma aquí? Well, bobby is also what the British people call their police officers. We call them cops in the United States. They call him, he's a bobby. That means he's a police officer. Okay, so where does the word pin mean? Well, in order to win somebody, right, to defeat somebody in wrestling, you have to pin them to the mat, right? No ganas sin un pin. So to pin, um, he pinned him to the mat. Uh, estoy viendo aquí sujetar, clavar, colgar. And that's when they count. You have to be pinned for 10 seconds. You get it now? Pin. <laughs> A bobby pin. He was defeated. He got pinned. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. All right. Really bad jokes. But all right. Let's see how you guys did on our double, double trouble. Monsa is the first one to participate here. And Monsa says, they tried to pin me up, but I left the safety pin in the safety box. Monse, you're on the right track. Monse, that's beautiful. Let's give her a nice round of applause. Well, I don't see too many people participating, so great effort. All right, let's see. Laura, Laura says, they tried to pin it on me. However, I left the safety pin in the safe. That works, Laura, nice job. Excellent job, excellent job. Yeah, to pin something on someone. Okay, so not to pin me up is como un post-it, right? But to pin something on someone, ya acabamos de ver, pin is poner al suelo y aguantar para que no se pueda subir, sujetar. You got to pin me for three seconds. One, two, three, you win. Okay, but to pin something on somebody means to make it look like they're guilty. He said I did it? He's trying to pin it on me. I didn't do anything. No, cargarme el muerto a mí, ponerme la culpa a mí. So the first part, this is a really difficult one. So by the way, seriously, muy difícil. They tried to pin it on me. However, I left the safety pin in the safety deposit box. The safe works as well, pero si queremos el double double, el safety y el safety. So they tried to pin it on me, intentaron culparme. However, sin embargo, I left the safety pin. Nosotros decimos un pin de seguridad. I left the safety pin in the safety deposit box. So there you go, folks. That was a really, really tough one, but you know what? Now we're going to take it easy in a section where we celebrate. It's called Famous Birthday Trivia. That's right, folks. That's right. It's time for Famous Birthday Trivia only on the show with no name. And let's take a look at today's birthday boys and girls. Also, a nice round of applause for Laura. <laughs> Laura, it seems like Laura's the only one who's taking a stab at, right? The only one who's taking a stab at today's very difficult say what sound, but I didn't realize it was that difficult. And Laura says, hey, I got most of it. Well, Laura, you're the only one who's even tried. So excellent job. And I know it was difficult. I know it was tough, but we're going to take a look at it in just a moment. Let's get through our spelling, uh, excuse me, our famous birthday trivia first. The first person we already talked about, he composed this song. He is most commonly associated with horror films. Halloween in 1978, The Fog in 1980, Escape from New York, 
also um, Dark Star, Christine, They Live. Today's name, that movie, They Live. And his last name is a profession where you work with wood and tools, right? All right. Uh, if you don't know who this is, you weren't listening in our movie section. Number two, this guy was born in 1980. I've talked about him so many times here on the show in the past. He is a tremendous actor, playwright. You might know him as the creator of the hit musical Hamilton. Also, In the Heights, which is uh, one that came out recently. Uh, no, well, the, the play came out in 2005, but the movie came out recently. Also, Moana, but in Spanish, you call her Vayana. Well, and he wrote that. You're welcome for the islands I pulled from the sea. And then in 2021, he released Encanto. He released Vivo. So honestly, this guy is just, he is right now, I think, the hottest composer, actor, uh, you know, showman that we've got. He's a crowd pleaser. Mira, para usar la palabra que vimos antes. And he's Latino, which that's great for us. Uh, with Hispanic descent, because it's Hispanic people taking over the world, baby. <laughs> so it's a source of pride also for many people uh, of with with Hispanic descent and from Washington Heights. The, the musical In the Heights takes place in Washington Heights, where he's from and continues to live, even though he's a billionaire. Well, prob not billions, but he's got millions. Once they ask you to like compose Disney movies, you're, you know, you're, you made it, you made it. And he's excellent. My daughter learned, you're welcome for the islands I pulled from the sea. He wrote that song. R the Rock sings it in Moana, uh, Bayana, you call it. And ahí a mi hija aprendió a decir de nada in English. So I thought that was great. And last but not least, she was, well, she still is. You don't see her on the runway too much in La Pasarela but an English model and fashion designer. Uh, she got really big in the 1990s because in the, in the 80s, it was about being voluptuous with a lot of curves, Cindy Crawford, Claudia Schiffer. And then she came around with this very like waif kind of look and the word waif, W-A-I-F. Um, chica esqueletica, it says here, waif. W, es que usaron esa palabra siempre. And they said that she even invented something called heroin chic. And I was like, why are we glamorizing heroin? That, why are we glad? Really? I think I want to go back to Cindy Crawford now, please. <laughs> I remember she was endorsing jeans and sunglasses. And her last name is Musgul, something that grows on wet rocks. All right, we've got a winner. Please give it up for Chris Valrol. <laughs> Number one, John Carpenter. Number two, Lynn Manuel Miranda. If you have not heard Hamilton, give it a listen. It's awesome. I got to see it when I was in New York last time, and I will see it again, even if it means I, I'll eat tuna for a week <laughs> out of a can. So that's Lynn Manuel Miranda. And he lived in Madrid, by the way, for a period. And last but not least, Kate Moss, fashion model Kate Moss. And that'll bring us over to our Say What soundbite. This was Kate Moss, I think ESD said it, talking about how she was always borrowing money from her mom. And he said, See, I was always borrowing money from my mom. And yes, Kate Moss is British, by the way. And she goes, she was just beginning to get fed up. Se estaba hartando, mi madre. She was beginning to get fed up with it and started telling me to get a job. Ella se puso harta de que yo le tomara prestado dinero y me dijo que buscara un trabajo. A proper job. Proper. Uno de verdad. No, uno en condiciones. A proper job. And stuff. And when I started to work, so, just as well, I stuck at it and didn't take her advice. So she goes, a proper job and stuff. Y eso. And I started to work. Y empecé a trabajar. Just as well. Menos mal. I stuck at it and didn't take her advice. Me quedé con ello, no? No paré hacerlo de modelo y no cogí sus consejos. This is supermodel Kate Moss. She was 
beginning to get fed up with it and started telling me to get a job, proper job and stuff like that when I started to work, so. <laughs> just as well i kind of stuck at it and didn't take her advice <laughs> there you go a young kate moss and folks it's time for our final section name that lyric hi hello alberto i think the song is <laughs> no sorry bye name that lyric name that lyric name that lyric name that lyric only on the show with no name that's right that's right amigos you know what it's named that lyric only on the show with no name and this is the final section of today's show so thank you thank you thank you thank you for all your hard work even though we're having fun, we're still working hard every day, trying to get better and better, uh, learn more things, you know, have fun, make more friends, sp spread some positive vibes, as we always do. So great job to all of you today. Wonderful participation. Remember, keep it up. You've got our amiga Jules Linares next and her program. It's called Let's Get Random. And you've also got, remember, Alexa. Whenever you're on the toilet later, you can say, hey, Alexa, quiero aprender inglés. Bueno, the hey, you don't have to do. Esa parte la añadí yo. <laughs> Maybe that's why she doesn't understand me. I always add a, an extra syllable. All right, well, I'll give you the name of the song just because we don't have time. It's Running Out of Time, and it's from the Vivo soundtrack by Lynn manuel Miranda, today's birthday boy. And uh, it's, be it's a beautiful song, and we looked at that expression, too. Running out of time. I didn't tell you the name of the song um, because I knew it was today's. But I told you the Muse one. Our time is running out. Well, this one is running out of time. It's a beautiful song if you haven't heard it. And it says, survived another disaster. Sobreviví otro desastre. Does this thing go any faster? Esto da para más. Esto va más rápido. We're out of time. The sun is going down. Se nos agotó el tiempo. Se nos, nos quedamos sin tiempo y baja el sol. When I thought we were done for. Cuando creía que ya estábamos acabados. My new friend gave us an encore. Mi nuevo amigo nos dio un bis. An encore. Let's reach the shore of this Miami town. Vamos a llegar a las playas de este pueblo que se llama Miami. Remember the size of the world before? And I'm not talking about size. Ah, suspiros, sino tamaño, which was today's homophones. Well, guys, it's Running Out of Time by Lynn manuel Miranda from the movie Bebo. Thank you so much for being here, my amigos. It's always a pleasure to spend some time with you guys laughing and learning. And now we're really running out of time. Doom, doom, sh -ta -ta. Doom, doom, sh -ta oh, yeah. We'll be back tomorrow, folks. Thank you so much. Ciao.